Good morning and welcome. How many times a day do you hear or see this in your classroom? Miss, this is boring, or sir, do we have to do this? The purpose of our meeting today is to showcase a learning theory that matches the needs of this very student. Constructivism, as the name suggests, empowers students to quote Nord van der Nurgen Kruger in Society of Psychological Education 2014 is a classroom where students love to learn. My presentation will briefly summarise my personal beliefs about what good teaching and learning entails. We'll look at some of the major features of constructivism and then go to the strengths and limitations and finally look at the real world applications in the classroom. Students are not empty vessels, but rather come to us with a range of background knowledge and experiences as noted by Gregorio and Papa Stefanou in 2013 edition of Ethics and Education. Our teaching should relate back to the passions and interests of the students as Nord, Van der Nerg and Kruger 2014 conclude that teaching should create authentic learning experiences. Now, students also learn in different ways and at different rates, as confirmed by Ertmer and Newby 2013 in Performance Improvement Quarterly. So we need to be able to accommodate for this. Fourthly, learning like life also needs to be collaborative, as everyone in our diverse classroom has a skill to share or a point of view. And finally, learning should be fun. Now, what is constructivism? As cited in the chapter on constructivism in the APA Educational Psychology Handbook by O'Donnell 2012, at its core, constructivism is underpinned by the work of Piaget and Vygotsky. These 20th century developmental psychologists concluded that the learner constructs their own knowledge from their own understanding of the world around them. According to Duffy and Cunningham, authors of Constructivism Implications for the Design and Delivery of Instruction, the major features of constructivism are firstly, learners are active participants in their own learning. Secondly, social interaction is necessary for effective learning. Thirdly, learners self-regulate, that is, they drive their own meaning making. And finally, teaching is student-centered, and hence the teacher plays more of a supportive, but a pivotal role, nonetheless. Now to the strengths. The active engagement and participation in the content generates a certain sense of momentum as the students want to learn, as shown in the 2010 research by Lou in Contemporary Issues in Education Research. Secondly, having engaged the student in their learning, constructivist theory goes to the heart of the needs identified by the Australian Curriculum 2016, highlighting for more critical thinking and problem solving. Martha Cassas's research in the 2004 issue of Teacher Education confirms that the constructivist approach guides the student into what Bloom's taxonomy terms higher order thinking, which in turn has been shown by Collins 2014 in Curriculum and Leadership Journal, can improve retention and recall and makes learned knowledge applicable in the real world. Thirdly, social networks are valuable for learning. That is, by working together to solve problems, Research by Peggy Ertmer and Tim Newby in 2013 edition of Performance Improvement Quarterly has conclusively shown that group work builds better cognitive outcomes than that which would be achieved individually. Many of constructivism's limitations stem from the inadequate planning and preparation. In comparison to direct instruction, Cassis 2004 also identified that the constructivist model is one that takes the most planning and effort on behalf of you, the teacher. Also, DeChesney and McMoore, authors of Educational Psychology for Learning and Teaching, stipulate it can take a lot longer to realise the benefits of this kind of learning. From a teacher's perspective, at face value, the constructivist classroom appears as a very unstructured learning environment relative to that of a traditional classroom. And hence, DeChesney and McMore 2016 speculate that you as the teacher may appear to be losing control of the learning process itself. Research findings by Tunka 2015 in the Eurasian Journal of Educational Research conclude that without sufficient scaffolding and support structures in place, students may be left feeling bewildered, or worse still, students may take advantage of the social environment at the expense of their learning. From a student's perspective, apart from the fact that it can take time to put these groups in place, students themselves need to develop the necessary skills to work in groups. 
But as Fung and Louis 2016 conclude in their research in the International Journal of Science Education, as a teacher you may at times need to guide peer interactions. Students that may be uncomfortable in social settings may be reluctant to ask questions, once again compromising their learning. And students who don't feel confident discovering information for themselves may just get frustrated when you as the teacher don't readily supply the answers for them. Hence, as a teacher, it is imperative that we develop, as noted in the Quick Guides for Early Years, Cognitive Development by Power 2013, we need to develop a safe and supportive environment. Now, constructivist theory have many implications for the classroom practice. Firstly, because students are actively engaged in their learning, I would leverage this positive engagement through inquiry learning and problem-based approaches, where students ask questions and find solution to pro problems for themselves, as noted by Duchesne and McMore. Secondly, as found by Fung and Louis 2016, group work would feature prominently in my classroom, as students share or co-construct knowledge, such as our already successful Powers Reading Program. Finally, for students in the class that have a particular area of interest in the constructivist classroom would assist this learner to develop their expertise. This being said, there are areas of the curriculum where you as the teacher will need to draw on other instructional methods such as direct instruction, where group interactions may not be appropriate for a particular topic or due to the affective needs of particular students as noted by Nord, van der Nerg and Kruger in 2014. In conclusion, Constructivism, therefore, excels in that it goes beyond just delivering abstract concepts that can easily be forgotten, but rather contextualises and engages the learner in the knowledge to create meaning for the learner and sets them up for success in the classroom of tomorrow. Thank you. Any questions?